Hey everybody and welcome to this tutorial on the global parameters. Uh, let's first start talking about you know what are global parameters and why might you want to use them. And I think the best way to show you guys that is through an example. Uh, here we have a pretty basic bookshelf and our client comes back to us and says cool design uh, but I need it to be you know twice as wide, half as tall, and uh, and half as deep. And you say to yourself, okay, that's not too hard of a design change to make. I'm going to go through, but I've got to edit, you know, quite a few different files to achieve that. Uh, and everybody probably knows, you know, the basic approach to do that. You'd edit each specific file and change the, the parameters. But there is, in fact, a better way. And to do that, to, to kind of show you, you know, what that looks like, this is a global parameters file that I've made that drives this shelf. So I'm just going to just uh, give you a quick example uh, I'm going to change the depth to be 10. I'm going to change the height to be 60. The width is going to be uh, 24. Um, one inch thick panels are too big, so I'm going to change that to 0.5. Uh, and maybe the number of shelves is going to be uh, 5 instead. And I'm going to update that. And lo and behold, uh, I have achieved you know pretty significant design changes just by editing a few parameters. Um, which the, can then propagate into to be drawings and everything like that. So, you know, the the basic use case for using a global parameters file is making you know pretty high level big design changes really quickly. So let's get into how do you actually do that. I'm going to shut down this design and we're going to work on something a little bit more simple. So our design is going to just have two parts. We have an axle here and we have some kind of a receiving end. And the kinds of changes that we want to be able to make are going to be the length of the axle, the diameter of the axle, and then the length and internal and external diameter of the receiving end to make sure that they match. And we're going to ignore tolerances and you know any offsets for the purposes of this video. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is make a new global parameters file for our design. So I'm going to go to the home window and create new file. And uh, maybe I'll save this as, you know, uh, axle receiving end. Okay, so the first parameters that we'll work on are going to be for the axle itself. So we're going to need two parameters, one for the diameter and one for the length. So we'll go in here and we'll create a new parameter, call it axle length. Make sure that your names don't have spaces, otherwise you won't be able to create them. They need to be a single string of characters. So the axle length, we're going to have just five as the default value. And we're going to make another parameter called axle uh, diameter. And that's going to be two. And then the other parameters that we need for the other part are going to be the length of the receiving end, and then the internal and external diameter. And it, you know, for our purposes, the internal diameter, which is this, uh, for the receiving end is actually the same as the diameter of the rod or the axle. So we don't need to create a separate parameter for that if we don't want to. Um, so we'll go back into here and we'll create another parameter called receiving uh, length. Maybe we'll make this 2.5 and what we do want to do is build in some intelligence for the external diameter. So maybe we say, you know, we want to be able to control the offset based on what the internal diameter is. We want the external diameter to be 0.5 bigger, for example. So uh, in this case, we're going to say receiving external diam. And the equation for this isn't going to be a value. Instead, it's going to be an equation. So we're going to say the axle diameter plus 0.5. Uh, and if you wanted to get um, you know even more dynamic with this, we could make another parameter called offset and then it would be axle diameter plus you know offset. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to type a number in here with 0.5. And we'll click apply. And then we'll save this guy. And now it's time to actually hook up uh, these values to the assembly that we made. So um, we have the assembly open. The first thing we'll do is, is tackle this file. So I'm going to edit this in a separate window. 
And step one is to, to hook up the global parameters file to this design. So you go to the global parameters icon here, select file, and then browse. And um, the actual receiving end parameters file is the one that we created. And you'll notice after you do this, that if you go to the equation editor, um, you'll, you'll see this new equation type of global and we'll have access to the parameters that we created in the, in the parameters file itself. So now it's just a matter of going in to the various places in the design and hooking up uh, those values. So for example, the first thing we'll do is change the length of the axle to, to use that parameter. So I'll, I'll edit the extrusion used to create the length. And instead of typing a value here, we're going to go to f of x, and we're going to select the axle length. And then for the diameter, that's driven by, by a sketch. Uh, quick tip, you can double click uh, most items in the Libre Design on the canvas to edit their driving sketch. Um, so I'll double click that. You could also uh, right click edit this sketch. Uh, anyway, I'm going to double click on this dimension that drives the diameter and I'm going to select f of x and I'm going to select um, the axle diameter and deactivate sketch. And now this part is fully defined based on the global parameters file that we selected. So I'll move on to the next, um, the next part and in a very similar fashion. Step one is going to be to select the global parameters file that we want to use. And now we have access to those parameters. So just like the last time, uh, the thing that we're primarily interested in is extrusion two. So first I'm going to set the length of this by editing the feature, selecting f of x for the depth. And we're going to select the uh, receiving length. And then we need to set the, uh, the internal and external diameter, which is done via the sketch. So I'm going to double click this. And we have two dimensions here. The internal diameter is 1.7. I'm going to change that to be the same thing as the axle diameter. Press OK. And then the external diameter, we're going to change to be um, receiving an external diameter. We'll deactivate sketch and then we'll move the dog bone down. So now um, this is all driven. Let me save this. This is all driven by the parameters file. So if we were to bring back up the parameters file And maybe we want to make some design changes. So we're going to say the, you know, the diameter actually needs to be uh, one. The axle length needs to be twelve. The uh, receiving end length needs to be three. And we're going to click update design. And now we've seen that we've achieved that design. So this is a super super powerful way to make sure that you know pretty complex edits that you make are done really quickly. Um, they allow you to be really nimble in terms of uh, reacting to customer requests or changes, especially if you make the same kind of thing. You know, if you're making bookshelves for a living and it's just a matter of how, how wide and tall they are, um, then, you know, you can, uh, you can be really responsive to customer requests. And, and you know, it, it goes beyond just how wide or tall something is. I mean, you can, you can use configurations. You can get pretty nuts with how far you want to go. Uh, building an intelligence into the global parameters file. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you want to have access to you know something to play with, go to the Alibre support website, support.alibre.com. Go to uh, sample designs and you can click shelf. Uh, use the global parameters to make endless combinations in seconds. And here at the very bottom, you'll be able to see uh, this shelf.zip and you can open that up and play around. Um, hopefully this is helpful and have a great day.